Hey ladies, we are live for uh, day one. Let me fix this just a tad. Okay, we are live for day one of the Clarity Challenge and we are talking about ditching mindset, which I am so excited to talk about because everybody talks about mindset. Everybody talks about limiting beliefs and how to get rid of them. And I feel like it's become kind of this scapegoat as to why things aren't going well for you, why things never seem to happen right for you. So we are actually going to dive into how to take the pressure off your mindset and do something else because I feel like this piece is missing and I feel like it's actually a crucial piece of our businesses that doesn't get discussed about enough. So if you're on, let me know that you're on, say hello. We're probably going to give this a few minutes before I start um, going into the content because I want you to be able to see this. I want you to be able to have this right, um, to have all the juiciness. So we are going to give you just a minute. If you're on, let me say, Hey, Brittany, how are you? I'm so excited that you're on. How's work going? So I'm really in, let me give you a little bit of background on who I am before we dive into this. Um, because some of you are new, the group has been growing with new members. So I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and how I got started. So I started my business five years ago. I started a business five years ago and I didn't know what I was doing and I hadn't quite healed from anything yet. And so I just kind of did what everybody else was doing. I was into personal development at the time. And so I taught about like goal setting and I don't know, whatever else, oh, how to be like more productive and stuff like that. It wasn't until I unexpectedly got pregnant with my daughter. Well, hold on, before we go there, that business failed. It failed epically. And while that business was failing, As Free As You See was born. And then I unexpectedly got pregnant. I think it was about a year and a half to two years later. And unexpectedly getting pregnant made me realize that I needed to heal from my trauma because I didn't want um, what happened to me happen to my daughter. And it totally freaked me out. Um, I went into like um, what they call the emergency stage of, of trauma, of healing. And it's just when it completely consumes you, it's all you think about and, and so on. And it was very, very dramatic. And I think that it was more dramatic than it needed to be because I was pregnant. And so I spent nine months completely healing from sexual trauma. Um, and, and that was only just a piece of my trauma that I had to heal from. And I thought that that was the, I thought that that was everything, right? Once I healed that, it was going to be everything. And that wasn't really the case. I worked with a soul shaman. I went to therapy. I did timeline therapy. I went, I did all of the above. And then, um, I decided that I was going to help women heal from trauma. And then I took a side turn because I was completely scared to share my story. And then I was convinced, I was convinced that helping women with trauma would not make me the money that I was looking to create and have this business and this dream business that I truly wanted. So I detoured and started helping corporate women become unstuck or some shit. And I don't remember, okay, don't remember at all. And I hated every second of it. I was not aligned with it. And at the time, I did not feel successful enough to help anybody become unstuck and be successful, right? So there was a lot of stuff going on in the background that he didn't understand until later on. But that's neither here nor there. And I think that I helped during that time. I think I helped two clients. And it was great experience. Um, I loved working with them. You know, I became certified during that time, but I absolutely hated it. And then I got this heartbreaking text message um, from Aubrey's dad that told me that I was a fraud and that the only thing successful I had ever done was um, get knocked up by some dude with a good job. And so it, it totally triggered me and it triggered me into realizing that number one, I did feel like a fraud because I didn't feel successful and um, it triggered me into helping women with trauma. And like within a week, I completely shifted my business 
I started um, to help women with trauma. I started to share my story and I started to do things from like inspiration, soul led and alignment. And then within weeks I had once one clients, my group grew to like uh, 1.3, 4,000 or something like that. And I recently have just shifted into helping trauma thrivers um, start and operate and scale businesses of their dreams because I truly want women to believe that they're allowed to be more than trauma, Um, that their history doesn't define who they are and doesn't define their future. And I believe that by being more than your trauma, you get to be and do anything that you want and I feel like when you heal your trauma you know exactly what you want to do and you want to have an impact and you want to essentially you end up wanting to help people go through what you want that what you've been through and so that's what I'm doing now and and I love it actually um it's just was perfect alignment and it evolved and it is It's just that way now. So I'm very excited about this direction. It's only been happening now for quite a few months. Um, I had to take a detour for a little bit because, you know, I got sick and got COVID like right in the middle of the transition. So things were kind of crazy, but it's a new year and all that bullshit gets to stay in 2021. So it's going to stay there. And now we're here. And I want to talk about clarity for a minute because I feel like it's it's really the key to everything, okay? It is the key to your successful business. It is the key to offers. It's the key to understanding your soulmate clients. It's, it's this piece, right? It's this piece that we all talk about. I'm not the only one that's talking about this, right? But we all talk about it. But the thing is, is that we go out there and chase this thing that we absolutely need. And we chase it by, you know, downloading the freebie and taking this course and figuring out the demographics and and trying to figure out the pain points of our clients and trying to figure out their desires and the things that they're not saying. And it gets to the point where it's so overwhelming and it's so frustrating and it's almost defeating. And it's just like, you wanted to find all this clarity. So you start chasing every piece that, that you find to the point where you don't even feel like you're clear anymore. And I, I have absolutely felt like that. Okay. I have felt like that to the point where I didn't even want to do it anymore. I was just like, I don't know who my clients are. I don't know what it is that I do. What do you mean? What problems do I solve? I don't fucking know. Right. And it gets so irritating because people are like, you have to do this and you need to make sure that you know what your clients eat and whether or not they drive a black Honda and whether or not They make $50,000 a year and they're moms and, you know, they, you need to know if they think that you're funny and all this other garbage. And the truth is, is that you don't need any of that. Okay. Brittany says, oh my God, relating. Yes. Good. I'm so glad to hear that because I'm sure that we are not the only ones. And I know this because I've talked to other women and they say the same thing. It gets to the point where you don't even post, right? Um, especially when it comes to content strategy, right? Where you are trying to follow this specific strategy and they tell you to say these specific words. And so now you have this post and you have this idea and you're trying to fit your beautiful inspiration into this box of a strategy to the point where you overthink every single word that you've put in there. You overthink the beautiful selfie that you've taken. And then you're just like, I hate this post. I don't like it. And then what ends up happening? You usually don't post and you're just like, fuck it. I'm just not going to post. And I used to do the same thing. I used to do the same thing and I hated it so much because I would overthink everything to death. Okay. I've been an overthinker. That was always my thing. Um, I don't do it so much now, but I, you know, I overanalyze and pick at everything. I can make dots from all the way over here, click all the way over here. Okay. I've, and I'm just that way. And I would get to the point where I just wouldn't post. And now I'm not showing up consistently. Now I'm not getting clients, right? Now that I'm not making any money whatsoever because now I'm not posting at all or emailing, et cetera, et cetera. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Nobody actually wants to deal with that. 
at all. And then when you reach out to coaches or people that you think that can help you, they tell you that it's your mindset. Okay, that's what they tell you. I have seen thousands and thousands of women get told that the reason why they're overanalyzing the little box strategy that they're told that they have to fit their inspired posts into the strategy is their mindset. And I'm telling you that it's not true. Okay, I'm not saying that that there isn't mindset issues at all. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you that It's not the mindset issue as to why you're overthinking the content strategy. It's not. Okay. And in order to get to a space where you feel like you can ditch the strategy, you have to come into this space first. And this is what I'm going to talk about because this space first has absolutely nothing to do with your mindset. Okay. Absolutely nothing. And it is to come into a space of safety. And you hear me talk about this all of the time. And I didn't realize how important safety was and probably until the last year of my life, but also with working with clients. The reason why safety is so important is because your childhood impacts your present. And I know that we don't want to hear that. And I know that that's really hard to swallow, but it's a fact. The reason why your childhood impacts your present moment is because it conditions you. Okay. So all the stuff that you get taught, whether it's negative or positive, good or bad, doesn't matter, but you bring it in. And so most of us, especially if you're a trauma thriver, which you are because you're in this group, a lot of the shit that you had happened to you as a child was not very healthy. Okay. It's and not, and not bagging on anybody's parents. Okay. And because our parents only do what they can with what they have. And they're just a product of their environment, just like we are until we decide to change it. Right. So the things that you picked up in your childhood still run in the background when you're trying to post, when you're trying to run a business, when you're trying to create the business of your dreams. And that conditioning is actually what stops you. It's because you do not feel safe being seen and heard because you don't feel safe, you know, saying things that might piss people off or might displease people or might rock the boat because you've been taught as a child that you are supposed to act in be this one way. And if you step out of that box or step out of that conditioning, you're going to get in trouble, right? Something bad is going to happen to you. Even though you're an adult and you know that nothing can really happen to you now, but you still think that. And this is why safety is so important. Safety is so important because it is about resetting and rewiring your nervous system so that your nervous system comes back to its divine and natural state so that you can, guess what, let go of stress, let go of all the bullshit from your past so that you can actually make forward action without being held back. So this is what happens when you try to fix your mindset, when you still are feeling unsafe in the background, you still have all this conditioning from your childhood. This is what happens. This is literally what happens. You go, 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 boom. You go, 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 boom. And then you, you run into these walls and they're the same walls every single day time. And then there's same walls every single time because you do not have the capacity to feel safe in what it is that you're doing. So you can continue to work on your mindset all you want, but you will continue to have the same results because you are still having subconscious and unconscious programming running in the background. Until you fix what's running in the background and coming into a place of safety, especially as a trauma thriver, you are going to continue to have the same problems. And what does that look like? That means you're going to continue to overthink everything. That means that you're always going to look um, outside of you for all of the answers, right? That's why we go to people because they have the blueprint for success um, because they can give us this one, two, three step strategy to a million dollars in one year. 
when in reality it that set of success or how that worked for them it might it might work don't get me wrong it will work but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to work for you why because you may like different things you may um not like webinars and this person is telling you to make a million dollars through webinars and you fucking hate the things like that doesn't that is not going to set you up for success because the energy is not the same and the thing is, is that if you don't feel safe in your body and within yourself, you're not going to try new things. You're not going to know who you are and you're not going to be willing to be like, no, this is what I like and this is what I'm going to try, right? Because you, you were afraid to experiment with what's going on and you want to stick to this pretty perfect path that isn't even real but we want to believe it is because it has to work because it worked for them and so what we're essentially doing is bypassing the inner work so that we can be on this path to success because it worked for other people i've literally been talking about this today oh my gosh what are the odds right that's so cool so it you have to remember that people i'm not saying that what other coaches are are saying or teaching is wrong. It's absolutely not, okay? I've worked with coaches. I've worked with like a handful of coaches. And what essentially you learn to do when you feel safe is you take bits and pieces that work for you and you start running with it rather than being like, okay, so I didn't get 500 followers on Instagram last month like I was supposed to. So it must be a mindset issue and it must be a mindset issue. So now I need to go and fix myself. Now there has to be something wrong with me because the strategy didn't work. Not that the strategy is not necessarily working for you because you're not aligned with it, because you're not feeling it and because it's really keeping you stuck in a box. And the thing is, is you're not going to step out of the box. You're not going to be aligned with certain things until you come into a place of safety. When you come into a place of safety, it allows you to step out of your comfort zone without freaking out. Okay. Stepping out of your comfort zone, whether you've reset a reset and rewire your nervous system feels crazy. Okay. There's, there's just no doubts about it. It doesn't feel good. It's uncertain. It's unknown. It gets your nervous system all riled up. It makes you uncomfortable. It's supposed to. Okay. Because if it felt good, it would be comfortable for you and then you wouldn't be stepping towards it, right? So there are going to be things that you must still do even though you feel safe. Breaking up with comfort will be one of the best things that you ever do in your life. But you're not going to break up with comfort if you do not feel safe in your body. You will find all the excuses there is to make sure that you stay comfortable. And you, this is how you know, actually, that you need to work on safety is because you would rather stay comfortable than step outside of your comfort zone. So if you struggle with breaking up with your comfort zone, if you struggle with stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing things that scare you and doing things that are new, it's actually a huge indication that you do not feel safe. And this is huge because a lot of people especially in the coaching industry and and building your business a lot of people talk about being scared to step outside of the comfort zone and it's because they do not feel safe within their body they don't trust themselves enough that they know how to respond in these situations right you don't know how to regulate your nervous system enough to where you get to the point where you're doing these things that you trust that you know how to handle what's going on and that part is so huge because how are you ever going to be able to interview on a podcast that's going to reach 50,000 people right how are you ever going to be on a TED talk that potentially reaches millions of people how are you ever going to do those things if you do not come into a place of safety so that you know how to trust yourself, so that you know how to do things out of alignment, and so you stop trying to fix yourself because someone told you your mindset is the problem, okay? Because this is what happens, and I, and I see this pattern happen all the time, is the coach tells someone 
that it's your mindset. That's the problem. So then the person or the client goes back and tries to dig out all the limiting beliefs and everything that's going on and tries to do the inner work. And now we're in a pattern of fixing, which is also an indication that there's something going on in the subconscious and unconscious mind. Because if you are in a pattern of fixing all the time, it's actually a trauma response. And I am not a stranger to this. Okay. Uh, last year when I was in my super unhealthy relationship, when shit was hitting the fan every single time, I wouldn't address what was going on with us. I would tell myself I was so convinced that I was the problem, I guess, because I knew how to heal myself and do all the things, right? So that if I would just do more inner work and fix my mindset and feel more safe in my body and and heal more, that my relationship would change. My relationship did not change. I did. And I went into a pattern of feeling like I had to fix everything all the time. And then I suddenly realized that I was trying to fix everything all the time. Okay. There is nothing wrong with you. Okay. You don't need to be fixed. You don't need to be broke or you you don't need to be broken. Of course you don't need to be broken, but you're not broken. Okay. There is nothing wrong with you. You don't need to be fixed when all that needs to happen is to let go of what is no longer serving you. Okay. You were never broken in the first place. Okay. There, none of that, no matter what it is that you've been through, it hasn't actually broken you. I know that it feels that way. I know that it totally changes who you are and the way that we operate, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't actually break you. And I know that we don't like to hear this, but it does make you stronger and it does make you resilient. And if you are really serious about being a business owner, you have to be resilient and you have to be strong. Because if you don't have either of these things, owning a business is going to be a huge struggle. And it just is. But Unfortunately for you, you've been taught how to be resilient and how to be strong from a very young age, most of you, right? So you learn, you already have the determination to be a business owner, but you want to make sure that you're not coming into these patterns of needing to fix yourself and something is wrong with you because when you actually do that, you repel your soulmate clients, you repel creativity, you repel alignment because you are literally telling the universe that there is something wrong with you. And because there's something wrong with you, well, then clients shouldn't work with you. And then you shouldn't have this money. And then you shouldn't have the business of your dreams. And you don't want that at all. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Is there some subconscious stuff running in the background that's no longer serving you? Yes. Do you want to get rid of that? Yes, of course. You want to learn how to let that go, of course. But again, there's nothing wrong with that. And this are nothing wrong with you. And you can, you're not going to fully and completely let go of the mindset part of it if you do not come into a space of safety. My dog just opened the door. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry. Max opened the door and I've got to keep it closed because Aubrey is sleeping and I want her to stay asleep because she's only been asleep for an hour and she's come back from her dad's house and she's got to sleep longer than an hour when she comes back from her dad's house. We'll just leave it there. So you want to make sure that you come into a place of safety. And this is why. And well, I've given you a bunch of reasons why. But when in the mindset, the in When people talk about like changing your mindsets and ditching your limiting beliefs, a lot of coaches will tell you, well, you just can choose differently. When you're not feeling safe, you cannot just choose differently. It doesn't work that way. And I know for a fact, because I used to try to reframe things. I used to try to choose differently and it wasn't working for me. And I never understood why. Well, it's because I hadn't let go of stuff from my past. It's because I didn't feel safe in my body. 
because of all of these other things that we have been essentially trying to bypass. And why do we try to bypass them? Because a lot of the safety stuff is about emotion and we don't want to feel, right? Nobody wants to feel anything, which I totally respect that. And I understand that because I used to be the same way right? I used to be so numb to everything, okay? And I mean everything. I'm not even sure I used to know what like being happy felt like or joy or bliss. So not only was I numb to all the bad emotions, but I was also numb to all of the good emotions as well. And I totally understand why people would rather not feel, okay? I really 100% do. However, If you are serious about running a business, you want to address the feelings and essentially the darkness. That's what it comes down to, right? All the the shadow healing or whatever it's called. It's all of this crap, all of this bullshit that you don't really want to deal with. It is something that you want to deal with. And the whole coaching, well, I don't want to say the whole, but a lot of people in the coaching industry would prefer to bypass it. But the truth is, is that if your mind is creating the actions and the energy to propel you forward and do these things, but those thoughts come from emotions. Well, if your emotions are not necessarily safe or you feel repressed or you are not really coming from a very good place and you're still trapped in your trauma, you're not creating thoughts that are going to create these actions that are going to move you forward. So there's an entire disconnect from the coaching industry because mindset is the answer. And I'm here to tell you that no, it's not. Now, does that mean Does that mean that you don't need to work on mindset? No, absolutely not. You will eventually have to work on mindset and and that's fine. And But the thing is, is that it's easier to work on mindset naturally. It's easier to develop habits that are healthy for you naturally. It's easier for you to do things that you don't really want to do, that you know that are uncomfortable, but are going to move you forward naturally when you do this piece first. This piece is the answer, not this one. And this is why every single time you get told it's your mindset and you go digging for all the problems, you end up in a fucking meltdown, right? You have a breakdown. Now you think that there's something wrong with you. Now you think that there's something wrong with your work and your content and your offers and whether or not you're clear enough. And now what do you want to do? You want to give up. Of course, why wouldn't you want to give up, right? It's so much easier to give up at that point in time rather than rather than trying to go through another limiting belief workshop to find out that it's not working, right? And then to get told by someone that's supposed to be almighty and powerful that it's your mindset and you're really the problem. Okay, it's that is so dismissive. I don't even know how else to put it. It is so dismissive. And I hate, I absolutely hate that coaches tell people that it is their mindset. And I see it all the time. And, and you get to the point and you start to see this as you build your business. And as you start helping clients and serving people, you start to notice the, and depending on what, of course it is that you're coaching on, but I've been working with women with trauma for, it's been two years now, right? And I've been working on my own trauma for five years. You start to notice these patterns and these things and people. And when they say things like, I've taken this course, I've taken this course, I've taken this course. I don't feel any clearer. I haven't been able to take any action. I haven't been able to do X, Y, and Z and blah, blah, blah. And the coach comes back and tells them that it's mindset. I know for a fact that it's not. I know for a fact that it's not because there's something else going on. And the thing is, is that some of these coaches don't realize that at a certain level, it's not, it is mindset. Okay. At a certain level, it is mindset. And that means for someone that has worked on safety, someone that has let go of their trauma, someone that has, you know, done all of this inner work. So they can't get to the point where it might be, it might be a mindset issue. There might be something going on, right? Of course. But 
If you see that there are people literally taking courses, investing thousands and thousands of dollars to only be told that it's their mindset, I would be fucking furious. Okay. I would be, I would be like, how dare you dismiss me like this instead of us exploring this and going into this deeper so that you can tell me, Hey, you know what? This is not my level of expertise. Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe you should go work with this person who specializes in you know, working women with trauma, because that's obviously what's going on. So I want you to ditch the pressure of mindset. Okay. I want you to ditch the pressure of mindset because it doesn't actually work. It does work to an extent, but it doesn't actually work when you are first starting, or if you haven't reset or rewired your nervous system. And the thing is, is that even if it is mindset or even if it is at a certain level, if you ask yourself, do I feel safe being seen or heard? And the answer is no, it's a safety issue. If you are afraid to express yourself or to say certain things on social media and you ask yourself, do I feel safe expressing yourself, uh, expressing myself? And the answer is no. It is because there's something else running around in your background and it absolutely has to do with your childhood. Okay, so you can ask yourself these things right before you post, um, right before you speak to a client, um, right before you um, Um, launch. Do I feel safe? Do I feel safe being rich? Do I feel safe being wealthy? Do I feel safe being um, seen and heard? Do I feel safe um, releasing this? Do I feel safe launching this? Okay. Safety is the key and it's go and your mind is going to know. Okay. When you journal on that stuff, it's going to let you know, do you feel safe feeling seen and heard? No, you do not get out of there, right? Because that's what your body is actually feeling like and telling you. And so if you don't address these things, even if you do show up, it's not going to show up in the way that you truly desire. And you're going to sabotage yourself and you're going to play small. And this is why I stress safety over mindset. And this is why in every single program that I put out that we go over safety first. We get you into a state of resetting and rewiring your nervous system before we ever move on to anything else. In my upcoming um launch that's coming on in this um, Clarity Rescue eight-week intensive course that is coming out. We spend three weeks going through safety, going through energy, and going through mindset before we ever even tap into the strategy, if you will, before we ever go into the other part of the work because I feel like this piece is so important and I feel like this piece is being missed in everything. Well, I don't want to say everything. I shouldn't say it like that because it's not true. But in like 80% of things that are being produced right now. And this is the key, right? If you learn how to do this part of the work, this stuff is so much easier, right? The strategy, the posting, doing all of this stuff, this becomes a breeze. Now, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy or that it's going to feel good all the time, but this just becomes a natural part of the process, of course, with practice. So I want, so I always put into place safety. This is why when I work with my clients one-to-one, um, I always, um, enforce, I guess, if you will, or stress the safety. We spend eight weeks resetting and rewiring your nervous system. And in the 12 week mastery program that is coming up, we spend 12 weeks going, resetting and rewiring your nervous system, but also checking in with your purpose and your life's work and learning that your core wound might actually be at, be the key to your life's work and unlocking your prosperity and things like that. And that program is coming up soon. But I do all of these things so that you feel like you can take on the work, so that you feel confident, so that you actually feel safe being seen and heard or feel safe pissing people off, right? Knowing that if you piss off 
you know, so-and-so on Facebook, they're not going to come get you and you're going to get in trouble. And I say that because, okay, I say that in quotes and say that in that voice because just a few months ago, I was working through, you know, limiting beliefs and safety and stuff like that. And it, when I was working through the limiting beliefs, okay, which is part of the mindset, it turns out that I didn't feel safe being seen or heard because I thought that I was going to get in trouble. And I thought that I was going to get in trouble because every time I just did whatever I wanted as a child or was playing or was being present in my body, I would get physically beat and then I would be molested. So naturally, I would not feel safe posting things out on to Facebook for the whole world to see because subconsciously and unconsciously I feel like I'm going to get in trouble if I say things that might piss people off or I'm just being or I'm just shining my light so that becomes a release issue right Uh, not that it's an issue but that becomes a release thing that becomes a safety thing that becomes an inner child thing that has nothing to do with mindset And it is affecting your mindset. Yeah, absolutely. But when you create safety and heal that, then it shifts, right? You don't even have to do anything with it. It just shifts. So that's why I keep bringing that up about getting in trouble because I I, kid you not, I used to feel that way like just a few months ago. And I was just like, what is this all of a sudden? And it's because I didn't I didn't feel safe. And what, what you will notice and this goes for everything, no matter where you're at, is your healing is going to come in layers. And so I spent a lot of last year healing, um, healing dramatically from um, my abuse that I had as a child. And um, I had a lot of flashbacks and triggers and memories come up and stuff like that from when I was being molested by um, my mom's second husband. And so a lot of that had to get dealt with. And so I think that there were just some things that kind of carried on that I hadn't fully like let go of that I didn't realize that I was carrying into my business. And this is why healing your inner child is so critical to your business, right? The healing piece, the healing piece is always the answer. It's always the answer. If you heal the way that is aligned for you, it creates safety because uh, regulating your nervous system is about safety, right? Because you come out of the out of the mode of fight or flight, and that's really why you have the programming going on in your background because you don't feel safe. And then it triggers this fear-based programming because it's trying to create false safety, and then it's just this vicious cycle. And so, but you will heal in layers and you will learn to let a lot of this stuff go. And what will happen is, is even when you get into the point where you're in healing for years and years and years and you're owning your business for years and years and years, you'll notice that some of this stuff is mindset and then it tracks back to safety and tracks back to your childhood. And you're like, what the fuck? I thought I healed this. I thought I took care of this. And and you did, you did, you essentially did. But then there's this little piece of you that comes up and is like, well, I need your love and I need your attention right now, please. And so you're like, oh my God. And then you go and deal with it because that's what you're going to do. Right. And then it's all, it's, it's better, but there are there. And I want to bring this up because it does get to the point where safety is not necessarily the issue of all things. It does become a mindset thing. And then you start to trickle it. You start to, you know, dig at it and then you start to realize that it is still your childhood and it is still about safety and then you you know you just go into it it is a vicious cycle it is absolutely a vicious cycle if you have any questions about we can talk about mindset that's completely fine if you have questions about mindset about safety um, about regulating your nervous system please feel free to ask them. If you're watching this on the replay, please leave your questions on the replay. I will get back to them. I will get back to you and your questions and any comments that you leave. Um, If you were interested in um, creating more clarity as far as your clients and your offer goes, I'm going to leave this freebie for you 
in the comments and I invite you to um, do this uh, guide because it is more about you and not necessarily about, you know, demographics and stuff like that, which I'm actually going to talk about more tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to talk about content and we are not going to talk about content in the way of strategy because I have learned, especially in the last few months, that you know, we, and I know, and I know this because for when I shifted into working with women with trauma, everything that I did was on inspiration, my program, my content, my lives, everything. Okay. I did nothing with strategy because I hated it and it was digging me into the ground and it was burning me out. And I didn't even know that I was like, doing things that were so led and aligned and all of that stuff. I didn't understand that to that extent at that point. And so then when I decided that I was going to transition into um, helping trauma thrivers start the business of their dreams, I decided that I was going to do everything strategy and I was going to do it everything this way and that way and that way. And I was like, I was repelling everything, all the clarity, all the clients, all the things. And I was like, oh my God, what is going on? And I was like, I just need a break. And then I let go of all of the stuff, right? I surrendered into it. And then all of a sudden, all the clarity, all of everything just started to flow through. And I was like, oh yeah, because I was trying to force something that I wasn't aligned with at all. So tomorrow we are going to talk about content and I'm not going to talk about it in the way that everybody else does. Not saying that other people don't speak on it this way, but I'm going to talk about content that is going to feel good for you no matter where you're at with your business and what it is that you're trying to do with your business, whether it's a side hustle, whether it's your full blown um, business and, and that's what's your key to income and things like that. I'm going to tell you what is going to work with you or work for you. The thing is, is that the reason why we talked about this first is because this is the building block to this. Okay. So if you do not feel safe, this is not going to happen for you. And this is why I talked about this piece first, the safety piece first, because if you are not working on regulating your nervous system, okay, and you can do this one piece and one, I don't want to say one piece, but you want to do it initially as a huge reset um, with someone that knows what they're doing. And then you want to regulate your nervous system every single day. And this is what self-care with purpose is really about. And this is why I... Um, This is why I journal, this is why I meditate, and this is why I work out. And I didn't realize that I was essentially regulating my nervous system until I understood that it was actually releasing energy, right? You're releasing and cycling out energy and bringing new energy in and making sure that you're essentially being in a position to respond to life, right? That's what regulation really is, is that when people trigger you and piss you off, you know how to respond to life. You know how to deal with it. You know how to handle the stress. You know how to keep moving forward. And so this is why your self-care routine is really about regulation and not about getting your hair done and your nails done and looking pretty and shit. And not that there's anything wrong with that, okay? I love to get my nails done, I love to get my hair done, and I love to feel pretty, but that is not what self-care is about. No, it is not. Okay, it's not about that because those things are very inconsistent and they are not about you and being in your quiet and coming back into your heart and coming back into your um, alignment and your presence. They're just not because most of the time when you're getting your hair done, what are you doing? Scrolling through your phone. And I can assure you that when you are scrolling through your phone, you're giving away your energy. And I'm not saying that I don't scroll through my phone because I do but you're actually giving away your energy and you don't want to do that. You want to, when you are regulating your nervous system and you're doing your self-care, it is about calling back all of your energy so that you can be present in your body, okay? And if you don't feel safe being present in your body, you do things like distract yourself from doing work and, you know, numbing yourself out with TV and watching TV that is like hardcore TV and stuff like that. 
you numb yourself out, you distract yourself. And not saying that that stuff isn't isn't good sometimes or whatever, but if you don't feel present in your body, you will notice that you do these things. That's why that's why 95% of people are attached to their phone. It's because they do not feel safe in their body. So they would rather, instead of being just chill and cool and in the moment and being present, they're scrolling through their phone. This is why, this is why you see people... And I'm guilty of this too. Um, when people are watching TV, they scroll through their phone. It's because they are not content enough with the TV. They do not, they don't want to feel present enough. So they need something else that is stimulating, right? It's a hit of dopamine. And so they don't realize that if you learn to come into your body and feel good when you're present, it's the ultimate high. And I'm not perfect at it, okay? I'm not perfect at it. I don't always feel safe being present. I don't always, you know, do a really good job at regulating my nervous system. I have periods and hormones and I'm a single mom and I've, you know, I've gone through a breakup recently. So it's like, not everything is always kosher. I don't want you to feel like I say these things because I'm perfect. I'm absolutely not. And don't get me wrong. I love a good TV show and I love a good scroll through my phone. So I'm not even going to act like I don't enjoy those things or I don't use those things. Absolutely not. And again, I feel like some distraction is fine. There's nothing actually wrong with it as long as you come back and deal with whatever's going on. So please don't feel like, oh my God, she doesn't scroll through her phone. I sure do. Okay, definitely been guilty of doing those things too much at times, definitely. And we all are. We all are. I mean, that's just the reality of it. That's just the facts of the time that we live in. And you will notice that the less people that are on their phone, they probably are happier in life. And not saying that if you have your phone on you all the time, you're not happy, but you're usually not distracted by those things. So just to, just to be aware of that, that was a little bit of a tangent. So if you don't have any questions, please come tomorrow. We are going to talk about content and we are going to talk about content in a way that works for you, no matter what it is that you do for your business, um, no matter where you're at with your business. Um, and you want to, if you are um, seeing this on the end of this, you want to go back and watch the replay because this is very much a building block to tomorrow's um, live. So make sure you watch this first and then come into tomorrow's live so that you can be ready to rock and roll because with tomorrow's content or live or whatever, I'm going to have you push the envelope and I'm going to have you push the envelope because it's not everybody's cookie cutter strategy of showing up. So please come tomorrow. If you're watching the replay, let me know that you're watching the replay. Jump on and say hello, hashtag replay or whatever they tell you. So you can do all of those things. Brittany said, thank you. You're welcome. I loved this. This was a lot of fun. Um, I don't, so I, I used to um, prepare for my lives. Like I used to write notes and do all the things because I used to be really scared. And now I do like a little prayer right before I get on and then I just roll and whatever comes out is what comes out. And hopefully it's, hopefully it's not like crazy or, or offending or anything like that. And so I love um, what comes through because it's usually what people um, need at the time. It's the craziest thing I've ever experienced. And I'm glad that I've been able to uh, learn to let go of control that way. So you're very welcome. I love doing these lives. I will be live more often in the group too. So that will be very exciting. So this is what I have for you. If there isn't any questions and that's cool, I will love you and leave you. If you have questions, like you think of questions later on regarding safety, mindset, whatever, pop them back in here. I will gladly answer them. Leave your questions if you're watching the replay. Let me know that you've jumped on and I will see you for tomorrow's live. We are talking about content. Okay, thanks ladies. Thank you for jumping on. I appreciate it. You spending your time with me and I'll see you all later.